So you're a beginner and you want to learn how to code fast in Python. I'm going to walk you step by step through the exact path that I use before learning how to write a single line of code to working at companies like Microsoft, Target and multiple startups. Hi, I'm Pooja, an ex software engineer with eight plus years of experience in the industry. And when I first learned how to code, I struggled hard. University didn't make sense tutorials felt random and I had no idea what to focus on. So I built my own learning system, something simple, designed around how people actually like to learn. And once I figured the system out, everything clicked. And today I'm gonna share that exact roadmap with you. So let's get into it. The first step in this roadmap is all about syntax. Think about learning a new language like French or Greek. If you don't know the alphabet or basic grammar, you can't really form sentences, no matter how good your ideas are. Coding in Python works the exact same way. Before you can build apps or tackle hard problems, you need to understand the rules of the language first. How to declare variables, define functions, create classes, and structure your code. In Python, indentation isn't just style, it's your structure. It determines which code belongs inside a function, a class or a loop. If you break this indentation, your code isn't just messy, it just won't run at all. So compare that example with Java or C Sharp. The braces are what define the structure in those languages, not indentation. So that's why it's really important to understand the syntax of the language that you're using. In Python, defining a function always starts with def, followed by a colon, and then everything inside must be indented. Same thing with classes. Indentation answers the question, what belongs to this thing? If you put the code in the wrong place, Python won't run it. Or even worse, it'll run it, but it won't do what you expect it to do. Learning these basics early prevents frustration later down the road. And of course, I have some course recommendations for all of you to learn these beginner syntax steps. So you're not just learning on your own. Definitely check out Programming with Masha's full beginner Python course. It's a two hour video that goes over all the basics and you don't technically need an IDE yet. I always get started with online IDEs first, just like online Python. Python.com. You can get started with running real coding examples without having to install something heavyweight. And don't bother paying for a course right now. There are too many free options for beginners out there. Next up, flow. No, no, not that kind of flow. I'm talking about how you're code flows, like how clean and readable it is. Once you understand the basic syntax, the next question becomes, where does all of this code go? Because you can't just have one file with thousands of lines of code and random function definitions everywhere. For example, if you were writing an essay, you wouldn't just dump random sentences all over the page. You would add an intro, body paragraphs, and a conclusion. There's structure to the essay, so it's easy to read. Python is the exact same way. At first, you might write everything in one file, a few functions, and maybe a class. And that's okay when you're first starting out. But once your program grows and you get more advanced, you need a proper repository structure. So here you can see that in our project, we might have three classes. The main Python class where the program starts, a player Python class, that's a class definition, and then maybe a utils class. Those have helper functions in them that we can call from the main method. That's flow. That's the code working together, but in the right places. And now this is where you switch from using a simple online editor to a more heavyweight IDE, like PyCharm or IntelliJ IDE. These ones help you actually navigate files, jump to class definitions, auto import functions, and even manage projects clearly. As your code grows, it becomes a little bit more difficult to manage everything on an online IDE. And this way you get to practice us what it would be like to code in an enterprise environment on the job. So next up is learning DSA in Python. For those who don't know what DSA is, it's basically a more advanced way to understand how to store and efficiently access data. DSA, or data structures and algorithms, is kind of the same in every language, aside from the syntax. But understanding DSA will eventually help you build projects, understand concepts like the heap and the stack, and even utilize Python libraries like collections and queue. So you want to start out easy and learn things about stacks, queues, heaps, hash maps. It's just a way to store data and efficiently access it. But all of the accessibility is a little bit different for each of these data structures. For example, with stacks, it's always about last in, first out. It's just that the last item that you store on the stack, that's the first to get popped off the stack if you want to remove it. And that's the opposite with a queue. With the queue, the first in is the first out. Kind of like when you're standing in line for food at a restaurant. And with hash maps, you're basically indexing things to just retrieve them in real time. So 
there isn't really an order to hash maps. These basic storage features aren't the only things that you would need to know in Python. Eventually understanding how to use binary search trees, tries, recursion, or even dynamic programming, those are all important to understand. And I mean, the best place to practice all these things is definitely leak code. I've mentioned leak code a lot. It gives you real world practice and their interview style questions which makes it easier to transition to that interview process. But if you want to just purely learn, I would watch coding tutorials online. I would check out places like Hello Interview, even neat code videos, and just practice DSA on your own by visualizing things. I actually have a video on DSA, so if you want to unpack that even more, feel free to check that out. But just as I've mentioned, DSA is not the only thing to help you complete your Python learning. There's something else, and it's called system design. Okay, so system design is a big topic. It's an important one, but we'll only brush up on a few things this time. I'm actually gonna post a very comprehensive systems thinking video in the future, so you definitely wanna check that out as well. So system design is important with any language, not just Python, but it will be the differentiator between people who are learning Python for the first time and you. Understanding how to set up an API, how to set up auth for people to log in, or even caching frequently used data or scaling your database according to how much data you're storing are all really important to understand. So knowing which resource to use in this situation is very important. Usually people pick resources from the big three, AWS, GCP, and Azure. They hold a lot of resources like databases, storage accounts, message queue systems, some have pipelines, and even deployment environments that you can use. Hello Interview, as I mentioned before, is a very good resource for this. You can learn things like how to build a Tinder bot or, or how to design Facebook or how to design Twitch. It's a really cool resource. This is vital in your learning of Python because it'll force you to make coding decisions at a high level and not just throw things together and hope that it works. So try to do a bit of Googling and learn a little bit more about system design on your own. There's a ton of cool resources out there. It's hard to go wrong. But the best thing is to put these things into practice, which is the next thing that I wanted to mention, which is building real projects. Okay, now that you understand Python's syntax and how to keep your code organized, it's time to start building real projects. Because here's the truth. You can watch a hundred tutorials, but until you write a lot of code on your own, your learning won't be complete. When I first started, I tried to tackle too big of a project, like a full-blown web app. And at that time, I barely knew how to define a function. That was a big mistake. So my recommendation is to start small. Start with a beginner-friendly project first and then move forward. So for example, a beginner-friendly project might look like a calculator or a rock, paper, scissors game. And these will teach you things like input, output, loops, conditionals, and functions. Then once you're more comfortable, move on to a little bit bigger projects like building a password manager or making a weather app using an API. These will teach you things like APIs, modules, classes, and problem solving. Finally, you can build something more real like a simple Flask web app or a backend API for a mobile app. And now you're learning about routing, databases, deployment, and real world architecture. This is the stage where your portfolio starts to look more legit. So yeah, those are the steps that I would take to learn Python fast, especially as a beginner. Remember, there's still a lot of hard work and consistency that's involved. It's not gonna be easy, but it's definitely gonna be worth it. And if you wanna watch another beginner-friendly coding video on my channel, I have more advanced concepts like object-oriented programming and data structures and algorithms. Check out those videos here. Other than that, happy learning. And leave a comment below if you have a different way of learning Python. I'd love to hear your thoughts. All right, see you next time.